One way is simply to talk to your teacher about uh, the grade that you felt that you didn't deserve. That is, the teacher gave you a higher grade than you thought you ought to have. Uh, are uh, a group of you going down and talking with the principal? Are a group of 44 students coming down here last Wednesday and protesting to the superintendent of schools a recent decision? Are a full-fledged uh, protest march? All of these are ways to protest and do not necessarily lead to violence and disruption as many people and frequently as the news media would have us to believe. believe. Well, in spite of the, all of the work that's been published on the origin of student unrest, the background of it, the reasons why, I think that it's less important to analyze where this came from than it is to try to figure out how we're going to use it. Rather than deplore this student activism, rather than attempting to stifle its energies, I think that those of you who are leaders, those of us who are responsible for providing educational leadership, ought to spend our time finding out how we can harness this for constructive purposes. Instead of trying to keep it outside of our institutions, we ought to be about bringing it inside our institutions so that we might enable it to work for us rather than letting it wreck us. I think that the opinions of the American people, which are generous urgings, which are humanitarian promptings, which opt for freedom, freedom for the Irish, freedom for Soviet Jewry, freedom for the captive peoples of uh, Eastern Europe, are decent promptings uh, and uh, should be part of the total balance and warmth of uh, progressive foreign policy posture. The American people are not pragmatic in their promptings. I'm saying that uh, the real politic of uh, our State Department has been penultimately pragmatic uh, at the cost, not only of our own national interests, but of our role as a moral leader of the free world. The president has said that he, that, you know, public whim does not make foreign policy. He's spoken out just very against this. <laughs> is, is the administration going to let go towards such a thing? I don't think the administration has any choice at all. I can't help but be more than a little bemused by the notion that foreign policy will not be made in the streets. Uh, at long last, let us not have foreign policy made exclusively in the ivory tower. Let there be some kind of reinforcing relationship between foreign policy and the decent urgings, the generous urgings of the American people.
it's what I would like to talk with you about is the use of dynamite and how we can use it most effectively. My premise is that our world, our nation, our states and our cities have inherited a large parcel of social dynamite. And if our way of life, if the principles which we cherish, if our democracy is going to continue as we know it, then we're going to have to learn how to use this social dynamite most effectively. It seems to me that there's also a need for a student curriculum committee. We are at the present time going through a rather intensive and extensive study of our elementary and our junior high school program. It seems to me that a student curriculum committee would bring a different point of view to these studies. We would hope that this curriculum committee made up of students would be able to take a look at what we're offering, determine whether or not it's relevant, not relevant, what might be added to the program, what might be deleted, where modifications need to be made in our present programs. 